Now this is a lovely fungus, Fistulina hepatica, the beefsteak. So called uh, because if you cut this thing open um, it oozes blood like a beefsteak or it oozes a liquid, a red liquid I should say, and the flesh is very similar to beef. It looks very similar. A good friend of mine who's a professional forager, he uh, uses this stuff to make uh, uh, to make a jerky but um, I'm not overly keen on it um, and uh, as, as a steak substitute if you like I find I tend to find it, it tends to be a little bit bitter um, and because I don't currently have a dehydrator I'm not going to have a go at making jerky so I'm going to leave this fella where it is beautiful fungus though eh gorgeous anyway how are you doing folks Leo Alderpold it's been a little while. Well, I'm out on a bit of a forage. Unsuccessful so far, apart from that fella and uh, a couple of the very common ochre rustlers. But it's a beautiful day. We've had a bit of rain, so I was hoping to be a bit lucky today uh, on the fungus side of things. But while I was wandering through here, uh, I happen to notice one thing that really struck me about this woodland. Now, if you can see behind me, you see there's nothing growing on the ground underneath at all. And I have to say, for the fungus as well, it's pretty pants. And I think the reason for that is you can't see this, probably, but the vast majority of these trees that you see behind me are actually holly. Um, and... Holly is a pretty inhospitable tree um, in terms of what it does to the ground, uh, the flora and the shade that it casts and the heavy spiky leaf litter. So there is literally, there is nothing, there is nothing growing under here. Uh, the only thing I've found in the way of fungus so far, apart from that there beefsteak underneath this holly, has been the scleroderma, the um, uh, earth ball, uh, which is a, a, a toxic fungus, not deadly, but... Um, Certainly you wouldn't want to eat it. Um, and it's, yeah, unbelievably denuded of any kind of biodiversity under here. So this is one of the reasons why we keep holly down to a minimum when we do woodland management. But, hmm. I'm going to go and find, hopefully, a bit more of a productive area of woodland and pick this video up in a bit. Well, Welcome back. So uh, I've been driving past this woodland for a while um, and I've wanted to come and check it out for mushrooms because to me on the surface it looks like it should be absolutely perfect for what I'm looking for um, which is the uh, Porcini mushroom, the uh, Boletus edulis which this time of year generally prolific uh, when you find a good spot um, and uh, obviously one of the most highly prized culinary mushrooms. So I, I came here, um, which is just down the road from where I was before, thinking, well, this is bound to be yielding something today. Um, but alas, I'm seeing nothing. And this is despite the fact that this should be ostensibly an absolutely perfect environment for them on the face of it. Because what we're looking at is this beautiful mixture of, we've got birch, oak, uh, this bracken underneath, um, it's those species that we're looking for, those tree species that we're looking for, really when we're looking for the, um, uh, for the uh, Porcini mushroom. But alas, it's barren. And I think the reason for that is because... Uh, well, <laughs> now I'm going to embarrass myself because I can't find this, but what I'm standing on is, is what seems to be some kind of cast. Uh, there's no no soil really to speak of it's um it's just solid rock uh, so there's there's really no uh sort of uh, no humus layer uh, which is really disappointing and i think that's why uh, there aren't really any mushrooms here so it just goes to show that uh on the face of it what looks like should be an ideal spot for mushrooms turns out it's not yeah uh so basically I mean, you can probably hear the rocks under my feet, but it 
Let's roll this. It's like uh, there's a very thin layer of uh, moss and leaf litter and oxalis, this stuff, oxalis acetacella, which is a wood sorrel and edible. Um, but there's really nothing else. No soil, no real soil of any kind. So I'll tell you what, if any of these trees were planted, I pity the guys who had to put them in the ground. So, it's off to see if I can find a more suitable spot. Hopefully catch in a bit. Hey, so before I go off in search of a better mushrooming spot, because I parked here, I thought I'd bring you here. But uh, where I am right now is a place called Blackberry Camp. Um, and this is a, an Iron Age hill fort. So uh, I'm standing inside the enclosure of the hill fort itself. Um, obviously you can see we've got quite a lot of mature oak and beech trees here. Um, so this goes back to about the 4th century um, BC. Um, <clears throat> and this wouldn't have been used as a, a military fort. Uh, this is most likely to have been uh, used basically by the communities that lived here at that time to store their livestock and um, all of the produce from their agriculture and so on. Um, so it would have been defensible, but it wasn't intended as being, uh, you know, a military uh, a military uh, fort as such. So it's just to protect the cattle and things like that. But, uh, mm. so these are the, the embankment walls. This runs all the way around. Um, I'll walk you over to what would have been the original entrance. But uh, going back from what I was saying in the last segment of video about the ground here being a very, very solid stony ground. Um, <laughs> tell you what, I reckon building this would have been some feat. But here we go. This would have been, this would have been the original fort entrance. Um, and let's just walk you through there. As you can see, um, you know, the valley drops down there beyond that uh, willow herb. Um, and to the hill on the other side, so it would have been very defensible. But I figured I'd just bring you folks here uh, while I'm while I'm out searching for a better mushrooming spot, because especially you American folks seem to like this sort of side of my videos where I talk a little bit about the history of a place. Oh yeah, solid stone under here, man. It's incredible. I'm smoking the 302, by the way, and some Jermaine's Medium Flake, for those of you who give a monkeys what pipe and tobacco I'm smoking. Oh, yeah. We've got another sort of smaller enclosure here so the main enclosure is that one there and we've got a smaller enclosure here with the entrance being just over there so what would have been in here I don't know but there you go these ditches here this probably would have been uh, a trackway um, so the villagers or the community could have based themselves up here from anybody potentially trying to attack and rob them there we go I wonder what that place looked like two and a half thousand years ago. Right, off again.